thank you for tuning in to Catching Kiara. I want to say thank you so much for watching. It's super exciting and super encouraging and motivating that you even find the channel interesting. My heart's desire is to really empower uh, the world with faith, um, truth, transparency, and just realness, reality. Just showing that you can have a balance and that it's possible to have this connection with heaven, but to also be connected with those that have been assigned to you or with those that you are assigned to. So I thank you for watching and I hope that you are empowered and just um, encouraged to be pushed along your journey. Today I want to talk to you about how to move past mistakes. A lot of us, we're getting on diets, a lot of us make, we've made um, bad decisions in who we're dating, I've done that before, um, a lot, and, and what else? We say we're going to start a workout plan and then we'll start off and then it'll fall off and then, I don't know, you may be a parent and you may have thought to yourself, you know what, I could have said this different or... I'm like the person that just lives in my mind and so very often I'll leave conversations just always saying was I wrong for this or was I wrong for that um, you know and just always evaluating myself or um, what's the word over criticizing myself and sometimes we can be super hard on ourselves so one thing that I've learned um, I remember just kind of being in a space where I was just dealing with some things. A lot of us deal with things publicly and a lot of us deal with things privately. And so sometimes those of us that deal with things privately, we're often like, you know, oh, I'm good and everything is great. And it's like, no, it's not. So how to deal with the past mistake? Here's one tip. Accept the fact that you're human. First of all, acknowledge your truth, and that is that you are human. You're not Superman, you're not Superwoman. You don't have superpowers, but you do serve a God with superpowers, and he has it all for you. If you had all of the answers, then you wouldn't need him. But since you don't, acknowledge that truth too, and don't feel like while you're here on earth, you have to have all of the answers. I often feel like I need to know, I need to know. Or if you're just a planner or you just like to know what's going to happen next or you like to just be ahead of any mistakes. I get that, which we should be planners. Try and have a plan A, plan B, plan whatever. Plan C, I think C is after that. But try to have a plan and figure it out. But I want to encourage you to know that my father, one thing that he's taught me, and, and I've never forgotten it, is that you can't let your past hold you hostage. I remember a lot of, like, I've meet, I'll meet a lot of people and they'll always be like, oh, you know, I remember when you, you were duck knee high. What is it? A knee high to a duck. First of all, I don't even know that a duck has a knee, but you get what I'm saying. Like, I don't want that to be held over my head. I don't want those things that you remember then. Um, and, and then the crazy thing is we have social media. So like when my wig came off, I can't, if I had stuck with that moment and said, you know what, I'm never going out on stage ever again, that would have put a halt to my income. That would have put a halt to my assignment. That would have been me being disobedient to what God has called me to do in the earth. Like it's so many things that the enemy will use that we have done to get us to be stagnant or to stay in one space. But one thing that I've dealt with, which while I was kind of just like doing some things that I ain't had no business doing, I'll be honest, I was dealing with uh, what is it condemnation um, and I had to learn and actually if I had not gone through that part of my journey I would not have known the difference between condemnation and conviction and I've often said it in a lot of the other episodes but I've said that condemnation is when we point to the problem but don't give a solution so in this week's episode I want to act as your sister in Christ and do what the Holy Spirit does and that is to present conviction where we talk about the problem but we also deal with with solutions so while we're trying to figure out how do we get past mistakes first of all we have to admit yes I was wrong this is what I did and I see what I should not have done okay so we acknowledge that so how do we move forward we move forward by saying you know what this is my notes hold on let me go to my notes write down the mistake I'm a journaler is that a word a journaler Journal, a journalist, yes. A journalist. I like journaling. I like writing things down. Sometimes if I don't feel like writing things down, then I'll talk them out. Um, if I'm not on Snapchat, I'm saving them to my memories and just kind of 
just crying there. Like if I don't want to talk to someone, then I'm actually doing like a personal vlog and not posting everything to social media. And this allows me to hear some of my answers. So write down the mistake, talk about the mistake. I think it's so important. I say it all the time. Y'all already know James 5 and 16 is one of my favorite scriptures, but it says confess your faults one to another. Talk, confess your faults, confess your issues. Don't hold that in. That's how people go crazy. That's why people just out of nowhere just want to start blowing stuff up. And it's because they have not dealt with something. Make sure you deal with it. And I know, um, too, we're like ashamed or, but who cares? Like no one has the right to judge you for anything because we've all made mistakes. There is no one in this earth who has made every right decision, period. That's it. So if you have people around you who have not made you to feel comfortable uh, for you to talk about these things, you know, and I was seeing something float around on Instagram the other day and it said, check on your strong friend. Like, it's so important that we do, we do check on those who are often just like, you know, you good or just checking. Make sure we check on those who are often just holding up the bloodstained banner. Make sure you have those conversations and figure out, are you okay? Do you have peace? Make sure they ain't getting to a space. Um, Cause you have like these random things, these random outbreaks where I think we were talking at the table not too long ago and some of my family members had gone to a funeral and the boyfriend just snapped, spaz, shot the girlfriend, shot the mother, shot at the auntie and tried shooting at somebody else and then killed himself. Oh my God, like what is going on? I think we need to deal with these things. And so how do we deal with them? Write it down, take a picture, talk about it. Don't live with it by yourself. Because when you live with it by yourself and when you become so angry and just let things pile up on each other, after a while there's no more room for anything else to go. So then you explode. So deal with it. It's a mistake, you're human, and that's okay. Talk about how it affected you. Talk about how the mistake set you back. Like, don't be afraid of that. Live with it. I think the most beautiful thing is when we understand and operate in the freedom of Christ um, and not abuse it, in which we can get carried away as believers sometimes, uh, especially with the grace piece or the mercy piece. Yes, his grace is sufficient, or even, we even we've heard songs that say his grace goes deeper than an ocean or blase splee, and then we forget about the scripture that say forgive 70 times seven. That sounds like a limit to me, and I think we forget about that part. Talk about these things, deal with it, and, and, and kick it with God like he is your friend. He doesn't want you to treat him like he's just the father. Like, treat him like he's the father, the son, the Holy Ghost. But he wants that friendship. Like, that was the beautiful thing about, I think it was Abraham or even Noah. Like, kick it with him. But here's a scripture. Hebrews 4. 14 through 16 says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with the confidence draw near to the throne of grace. So this this scripture unlocks a lot. It has a lot in it. It lets me know that my father, my friend, they understand what I'm going through. So they're not going to hold, you know, this rope over your head, like go ahead and hang yourself. No, I understand what you're going through. And with that understanding, that should give me confidence to boldly go to the throne of grace and say, God, this is what it is. And, and you have to be honest too. Like, if you have a struggle with fornication, or if you have a struggle with uh, cursing, homosexuality, lying, whatever it is, go to him and say, God, it feels good when I do such and such. I don't know why, but I need you to help me to get to the root of this. I need to deal with it. I want to be set free. Some of us will deal with the mistake and we'll just kind of brush it under the rug and then we'll learn a behavior to become okay with that mistake or okay with that imperfection. And then we'll just say, oh, you know what? That's a part of me. No, 
that's the reason you're trying to deal with it. That's the reason you're trying to get answers. So continue to deal with it. It's a process. As long as you are here on this earth, it's going to always be a process. But are you committed to making sure that you succeed in that process? And it's just so interesting that we make sure we're successful in every other thing in our lives. But when it comes to the faith piece, it's like, oh, God understands. Like, Understand this scripture, unlock the scripture, but don't abuse it and take advantage of it. It's sort of like how we are in our relationships, but how to get past it is we acknowledge it, we we understand that we can go to the Father about all things, we can kick it with him like I'm gonna kick it with my homeboy and say, this is what it is, now I need your supernatural help because I can't do it. And sometimes his supernatural help will kick in. It won't kick in the next day, maybe. It has the power to, but are we allowing him to? Do you need to change your company? Do you need to change your music? Look at literally everything of your life. Speaking of music, I remember my mother telling me, you better turn that music off. You need to listen to some other music. When I was younger, I would always listen to um, Little John. From the window to the wow. It was just a, you know, I was excited and just amped and I was ready for anything and it just encouraged my road rage, you know? Um, and my mom was like, that's the problem because I kept getting tickets back to back to back. My license got suspended and I got arrested, I think more than once for license. And I was really irritated because the judge had given me community service and I'm like, for license? But there was a lesson, and though I had made this mistake, it even had slowed me down with my career in music and all of that. But the lesson that I learned was, number one, you should have listened because it made sense. And I started noticing that my foot was like of metal whenever I listened to certain music. And my mom was just trying to help me. Like, what, what other thing is she trying to do? And if I had listened, I would have not wasted so much time and so much money. Like, it was just awful. I don't know if it's like that with every stage, but I was like paying thousands of dollars because of a licensing issue. So I'm saying all of that to say, I wrote down the mistake, I acknowledged the mistake, I saw what I could have done better. What I could have done better was simply listen. It was that easy. Even if I had just considered it one day and evaluated how that day went, probably would have been better off. Um, but not just that, I was being stubborn. So I started also paying attention to the other characteristics that were attached to the mistake so that I could make sure that I even avoided those ways of thinking or those mentalities because sometimes we could be stubborn, sometimes we could be hard head, which I had like at least five or 10 years of just thinking I just knew it all, which I think that comes to with that age bracket that I was in. Um, but that's how you avoid it. You just evaluate yourself. Self evaluations are so necessary. And I think that too is why I'm always open to saying or going to people that I trust and saying, am I tripping or am I wrong for this? You know, just to make sure you have a witness or not just a witness, but, and it's not you talking about everything or overbearing them with a burden, but it's simply utilizing that village that you have and saying, I need you and I just wanna make sure I'm being a fair individual. I wanna make sure that I'm being a righteous individual. So that's how you can avoid the same route, get the lesson out of it. Obviously, the lesson was I had to pay thousands of dollars. That could have been an investment. It could have gone towards some new clothes or it could have gone to the needy and the hungry. Uh, it could have just done something. And instead, I'm out of those dollars that could have just gone towards even my company or even towards what I'm doing now. Something just that makes sense rather than me having to literally pay for the mistake with my time and money. And that's literally sometimes all we have. So that was the lesson and it was to basically slow down, abide by the law, listen to somebody and just chill out. Leave on time, get time management, put pride aside. It was so much in that lesson. So make sure you get that and cultivate that part. Practice it. Would you want to repeat it again? No, I don't. And do I speed still sometimes? I do. Am I always on time? No. But you must believe I am not doing the same things that I was doing before. Um, so I think about that. Even the other stuff that, you know, I'm just giving a simple life lesson. But um, 
even the weight thing, you know, like I used to be over 300 pounds and I remember my my Nana saying to me one time, you look like a cheat day, because I would say I have a cheat day every weekend. And she was basically saying, enough with the cheat days, you look like one. Or I remember my Uncle Bobo, and I walked in the house and I hadn't seen him in years. And I thought he was gonna say, girl, you look just as beautiful as you could be. And he said, girl, you get just as big as you could be. And it surprised me because I hadn't seen him in so long. And while that did kind of offend me and hurt my feelings, the the thing is is it came from a safe person so you could trust that their intentions weren't ill or to knock you down it was out of concern and that was how it came out like we also have to con consider you know what walks of life does every part of my village come from and if you trust that person if you believe that you know and i'm not saying that you can't communicate and correct some things because too that's how we become better but I would, be, I would have been silly to have not gotten the lesson. And eventually they all sat me down. I was like, look, we're not concerned about your image. We're concerned about your health. You're only 18. I think I was overweight, 15 too. And I was heavy, looking like a quarterback. And just still eating, not even trying to figure out anything about clean eating at all. I was just doing my thing. Wasn't working out. It was just sing, eat, and praise the Lord. No, honey, you have to live long and be healthy and breathe well and be in a good space so that you can fulfill purpose. So I started getting you know, the lesson. What lessons did you get out of it? And now you can apply them. Apply the lesson. Don't continuously repeat it. And don't, like the children of Israel, they were repeating a lesson for 40 years. So my question to you is, are you going to hold yourself up for 40 years for not getting the lesson and holding yourself hostage um, to a mistake? mistake or being afraid. Um, a lot of us have fear of failure, but you have to move forward. God has something great for you. As long as you have breath in your body, there is purpose to you. There's destiny to you. There are promises to you. And God wouldn't bring you this far. We say it all the time, but do we really believe it? God wouldn't bring you this far to leave you here. And don't over-spiritualize everything. Just actually look at yourself and see if you're free mentally, spiritually. Like, where are you? Where are you? Do you know where you are? Have you even done that kind of evaluation? Um, but how to avoid the mistake? is you acknowledge it you learn from it and you move forward and you have people who are not forcing or beating you down while you're down but they're trying to pick you up and trying to build you up trying to pull you up and sometimes you have to have talks with yourself uh, and that's how you move forward and it may take time you may not move forward the next day it may you may move forward in a week or in a month but just be okay with respecting your process and saying you know what I'm victorious like at least I didn't die in it as long as I didn't die in it I'm not stuck there as long as I'm moving and don't worry about speed just be okay with moving forward and know that everyone makes mistakes but there's still some beauty that God takes from that and he molds it into your good to where it just all works and then you look back and say you know what it was messed up that was jacked up but it wasn't so bad after all and I still won't go back and do it again so I hope that encouraged you. Move forward, you can do it. It's in you, you're well equipped to succeed and to be victorious. Press toward the mark, toward the higher calling uh, through Jesus Christ and I hope you're inspired.